Hi, it's teacher Melissa, and I've been working really hard on my extension questions with my students. And now I teach a wide range of students. I have the trial certification, so it goes all the way down to pre-VIP babies in high chairs. You know what I'm talking about, folks. But I also go all the way up to seven plus. So I'm gonna try to give you a range of how you can help your students in all of those different levels when you're giving them extension questions. Now that's something uh, VIP kid and parents really want us to do. A lot of these kids are already taking English classes in their Chinese schools, but what they lack is conversation with a native English speaker. Actually, they lack a whole lot of conversation. It's a lot like back in the 70s and 80s when I took Spanish in my rural Appalachian high school. I learned a lot of sentence patterns. I learned the names of nouns, I learned how to conjugate verbs, and I got out of Spanish class and could not speak Spanish to anyone. So that is uh, similar to what they have because they don't have native English speakers teaching in their schools. So what these kids need is a sentence frame. Now I know you've probably asked a question before, an extension question, and you get the deer in the headlights look from the student. That doesn't mean they didn't understand your question. They didn't understand how to reword the question into an answer because we flip around the nouns and the verbs and the order of helping verbs and actually change the tense of helping verbs. So they're kind of panicked because they know the noun answer, what do you like to eat, but they don't know how to rephrase it into a sentence. So I try to answer the question first if I know the student might struggle with this or if it's a new to me student or especially if it's a younger student. So if I'm just going to say what did you eat today? First of all I've got a prop in my hand before I ever ask the question. Mm, what did you eat today? Now if they answer me right away I ate an apple. Great, I'm good to go. If I kind of get that dear hesitation and they're not, I'll follow up immediately with the correct sentence frame like this. Mm, what did you eat today? I ate an apple today. I ate an apple. Hmm, what did you eat today and I'm pulling something out giving them an option so I'm going to give them the sentence frame for the answer what did you eat I ate I'll do the same thing if I'm doing uh, past tense and get up to upper level two level three I want them to start turning it into past tense on their own I'll say today is Tuesday yesterday was Monday what did you eat yesterday, if they can't say it, if I get a pause, if I get a deer in the headlights, I will say, I ate an apple yesterday. What did you eat yesterday? Hmm. So I've given them the sentence frame for the answer. That's what they need. Hopefully they'll say something besides apple. <laughs> but if they did say apple, you're going to teach them also or two, or something like that to help them finish the sentence. So I'll do this um, with uh, upper level students as well. When we use words like prefer, what do you like best? And I'll say, hmm, I prefer pizza to hamburgers. Which do you prefer? Now notice I went ahead and gave them the sentence frame first. What do you like best? Which do you prefer? Which do you like at KFC? And I might give them the sentence frame for the answer. When I eat at KFC, I prefer the hamburgers. And yes, they eat hamburgers at KFC. KFC serves all American food. There is what I have discovered. So give them the sentence frame ahead of time if you know they're struggling or if they're a brand new student. Give them the sentence frame with your own answer, even for the more advanced students. 
turning that the uh, because we'll say what does something do or you know when we switch it around the uh, the verb tenses change the s on the uh, helping verb switches to the s on the net on the base verb it gets very confusing for them so help them out by giving them a sentence frame with your answer to give them the correct way to answer you and fill in their own information and that will help them build English skills with you. If you have other ideas of how to help other VIP Kid teachers with this conversation skill when a student doesn't know how to answer, post them in the comments below. We'd love to get tips from all of our teachers working together. Have a great day.